Hi, Jim Brambick here. You hear that? No air conditioning. It's awesome. I've got the windows open. It cooled down last night for the first time this fall. I think it got down to like 60 degrees and opened up all the windows, shut off the air conditioning and got some fresh air in the studio. Ah, feels good. It's been a hot summer. So today, I thought it would be fun if we talked about making conchos. I love making conchos. I love seeing conchos. I love seeing conchos on saddles, on belts, on jewelry. I just love the way conchos look, at least good looking conchos. You know, a lot of conchos are just kind of pressed out in some sweatshop in China and they just look cheap. Handmade conchos are quite another thing and they fetch a really nice price when they're well done. So a few years ago, quite a few years ago, a friend of mine who is an old retired cowboy turned silversmith, he was a leather craftsman and a silversmith, his name was Max Anderson. He taught me some of the finer points of making conchos and Max probably made, oh, I don't know, a hundred thousand conchos in his career, maybe more, who knows. But he sat at his bench literally all day, every day, cranking out conchos. He was a machine. Um, he did it the way that uh, most people do, and that's sawing them out by hand and stamping them by hand and shaping them by hand and soldering the components together. And the thing about conchos is, here, let me show you my, my old belt here. Um, this belt Max helped me make, and uh, it has, I think, 17 conchos on it. And when you get into making conchos, you quickly realize that you don't make conchos one-off. Uh, to do anything substantial like this, you need to be batching your work. So over the years, I have taken what Max taught me and improved on the process and developed some tools to make it easier for me. And for the last few months, I have been trying to perfect that so that it could be a marketable, useful tool that everybody would see the value in. So I've kind of put together a system, a concho making factory, if you will, that I can provide to you guys and you can do very easily what is difficult to do manually um, with just some few, a few simple tools. But anyway, we lost Max a few years ago and it was really, um, it had a, he had a big impact on my life and uh, I really miss Max. So I love this belt, I still wear this belt. These aren't the most beautiful conchos I ever made, but they remind me of Max and the good times that we had and uh, means, means a lot to me. But, I'm gonna bring you over here and show you a little closer this belt and some other conchos that I had laying around here that I've gathered up. And then we'll go through making a concho using the system that I described. So, let's get to it. Okay, let's take a closer look at this old concho belt. These conchos are what Max referred to as Geronimo conchos. I think that was his own his own invention or his own name for this design. It's a basic concho. It has a, a low dome on the big disc and then there's a smaller disc that's soldered in the center that is a steeper dome. And the way that this is constructed is you stamp the concho while it's flat and this is a, a stamp that Max called it an eyelash stamp, and that's what I've always called it. And then I believe we used a coal chisel or a, a um, screwdriver, just a flat screwdriver, to make these radiating lines from the center. And then the, the high dome was soldered on. And finally, a Chicago screw, a barrel screw a bolt was soldered onto the back side. Let me see if I can get one of these off and I'll show how that works. Okay, here's the back side. And this little, I think it's a quarter inch or maybe a 
yeah, it looks like a quarter inch barrel screw, uh, Chicago screw is what most people refer to these as. And when you tighten it down, it provides enough, enough space to allow for the, the leather of the belt to be pinched in there and it holds the concho securely. That's about the simplest form of concho I know how to make. Um, another type is this concho with a little piece of, I think that's Kingman turquoise. This is actually some saddle silver that I made for a client um, and she sent them back to me. They didn't have the Chicago screws. They had a stainless steel screw. Uh, they were intended to be screwed into the, the wood structure of a saddle and she ended up having enough of them. So she wanted to send these back to me to put Chicago screws on them and have a little more versatility with them so she could put them on a purse or put them on a belt. But uh, this concho was made similarly. It was stamped while it was flat and it was stamped around the perimeter while it was flat, I mean. And then I domed, I cut out the flower, engraved the flower, domed it, and then I put it inside of, I uh, believe it was just a small socket from a socket set and hammered down the central part of it to make it look like a natural, more natural shape of a flower. And then I soldered on a little bezel cup. I believe that's a six millimeter bezel cup. And so when you put these together, they, they would look pretty nice on a, on a purse or on a belt. I have several of those to send to her. And similarly, they have the Chicago screw on the back, a brass Chicago screw. These take a little bit more work because the edges of the, the base are scalloped and you have to lay that out so that you don't end up with a really skinny scallop or a really wide scallop to finish it off. So it takes a little bit of planning and uh, of course an easier way to do that would be with a custom made pancake die or something like that. Um, then we have some other conchos. This is a concho that was made using the system that I'm going to explain momentarily. And this is really a um, dynamic looking concho because it's got a, a lot of depth. It's got a lot of dimension. And I used a, an eyelash stamped around the edge and then just a little circle that kind of makes it look like a dot. And this is, I have yet to put the Chicago screw on there, but again, this is a really nice looking concho. Looks like a lot of work went into it, but it was really fairly simple to make with the system that I used. So let's jump into that. I'll, I'll take you through, we'll, we'll just make one of these and I'll take you through how it's done. So let's jump into it. Okay, for the first part, we're just gonna be using this piece of nickel silver. This is 20 gauge nickel silver. And we're gonna insert it into a pancake die. This pancake die is a bit different from other pancake dies you probably use because it is absolutely concentric. All of the features are geometrically concentric to the center of the die and they're equal. I use matter, modern CAD software to ensure that each feature is identical to the opposite feature. Um, and the importance of that will be evident here in a minute. But let's move over to the press. Okay, here we are at the press. This is one of my favorite tools in my studio. This is a Potter Press from Potter USA. Kevin, if you're listening, you really should put me on the payroll, buddy. All I'm going to do is drop this between the upper and lower platens. I have some spacers here, uh, magnetic spacers, to make that space a little less than it would otherwise be. And it just takes a little bit of pressure, not a great deal of pressure, to pop through that. 
There we go. So we loosen that up. And we have our our form cut out of the stainless steel. I mean of the nickel silver. Take a leather mallet or rubber mallet and give that a couple of wax to remove it. <clears throat> and we have this little tab, and the reason that, that geometric um, equality and con concentricity is important is now all I need to do to be able to cut that tab out is to turn the poncho around and line it up so that it's opposite or any really anywhere once I feel it fall in place. I can use the same pancake die to cut this little tab off the top, which we'll do right now. So no sawing required. <clears throat> That's one of the, well, that is the only reason for using a pancake die and a press. Now, as much as I love this press, like I said, it doesn't take a lot of pressure. Um, even a cheap press, like a cheap shop press can uh, accomplish the same thing. Not quite as eloquently as a powder press, but it's not the amount of pressure that you're applying to make these conchos. It's that it's properly applied. So there's our completed cutout for this concho. And we'll move on to the next step. I'm gonna move you over to the soldering bench for that. As I'm annealing, what I'm looking for is that the flame that's bouncing off of the metal becomes orange. I'm going to turn this light off. Maybe it'll be more evident. Okay, you see how that's starting to turn orange now? That indicates that it's hot enough to be annealed. So I'll drop that in the water. And... Pull it out. Now that we have an annealed piece of metal, we can use our impression die to give this rather drab looking concho some shape. And that will take us to the next step. And we're going to be using, oh, let's see, we're going to be using kind of a classic concho looking floral flower shape and you'll notice that this impression die is a little bit different again from other impression dies you may have worked with let's take a closer look at it <clears throat> this impression die has a circle around the flower here that circle is also concentric with the center portion of the flower. And the purpose for this circle is so that when you lay your concho blank, you don't have to guess where the center is. It takes a lot of force to make these impression dies. And what happens is after 60 or 80 tons of force, they tend to kind of squash a little bit sideways one way or the other. So they're not always perfectly, uh, you can tell, this one to me looks like it's a little bit further, the design is a little bit further down from the center of this piece of metal than it is from the top. So in order to make your life easier, what I'm doing is providing that circle of concentricity. And that should help you get it lined up perfectly because you want that design to be directly in the middle of your concho. Now let's move back over to the press. <clears throat> okay, we just annealed and now 
we need to take our first impression here. So I'm taking great care to make sure that the concho is centered and I'm putting a little piece of, of urethane in the center of the design. All I need to do is apply a little pressure. Okay, that will give me a starting point. What I like to do is remove it and anneal it and take a second pressing. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, I have annealed again, and this time rather than using one piece of urethane in the center, I'm spacing some three smaller pieces of urethane kind of evenly around the design there. And we will give it another press with the three smaller pieces. This works often better than one larger piece. I'm not really sure why, but experience has taught me to go with what works. Now nickel silver is quite a bit harder than sterling silver. You could probably get a good press with only two, or a good impression with only two pressings. But since I'm working with this harder nickel silver, I want to take several pressings. So now I've kind of moved my pieces of urethane to another part, just kind of shifted them, shuffled them up a little bit. And I'm going to take another pressing. And then I'm going to do that one more time. I can see I'm a little bit light on the one side here. Have a look at that. Okay, we're getting a pretty good impression. I see a couple of spots here and here where I'm not quite happy with the depth of the impression. So I'm going to kneel and do this one more time. Now, if you were making these 10 conchos, a dozen conchos at a time, you would want to do this in a um, assembly line. You wouldn't want to complete one concho and then move on to the second concho. You would want to complete one operation and then move on to the second operation. But in the interest of time for this video, I'm only making one concho. But please understand, I never make one concho at a time. That's just not very practical. Okay, I have annealed and I'm just placing a couple of small pieces of urethane on to the concho to get my final impression here. Had just a couple of spots that weren't quite crisp enough. <coughs> Let's have a look. Okay. That's a good crisp impression all the way around. I like that. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, this concho that we just finished in the press would look a lot better if it had more dimension to it. It would look a lot better if it looked more like this concho. But how do we accomplish that? To do that, I have made a two-part forming die, which is male, female, and to make it especially easy, I have a little 
depression or a milled out area that the concho nests in and that takes all the guesswork out of getting things concentric. And there's pins that match up with the female die and the male die to ensure that the two parts go together exactly the way they're supposed to go. Now all we need to do is drop this in the press and give it some light pressure. It really doesn't take much pressure. You just want to bottom out, take the space out between the two male and female dies. So let's do that now. Uh, let's drop our forming die in. Let me lower you a little bit more here so you can see better what's going on. So all we have to do is apply a little pressure until our dies, until I, until I feel that the two dies are bottoming out. It doesn't require much pressure at all. And that's all there is to shaping Poncho, giving it some dimension. Now all we need to do is stamp a design around the perimeter, polish it up, and we have a new concho. Of course, again, I wouldn't do these one at a time. I would do these in batches. I'm going to move over here to the anvil and figure out how I can get you positioned where you can see what I'm doing as I stamp. Nothing exciting there, but you stuck it in for this long, you might as well stay for that too, right? Apologize, I almost forgot. You might want to uh, see the soldering of the Chicago screws on. So here we go with that. Wouldn't want to polish only to solder again. I have the um, I have a bunch of the Chicago screws here somewhere. There you go. And all I'm going to do is use some hard solder. Cut a few pieces. Drop some in.
add a little flux. I use this Cupernel liquid spray on flux. My go-to for these small jobs. And try and roughly position in the center. Bring it up to heat and then I can move it to the exact center once it gets up to heat. Got a little heavy on my flux there while I was talking. Let that boil off. But as it was boiling off, seemed to center that Chicago screw up nicely. And our solder just flowed. I like the position, so I'm gonna move her to the next one. I'm trying to keep my heat primarily on the concho and not on the Chicago screw. I wouldn't want my solder to be pulled up into the screw or onto the screw. I want it to stay at the base. And there the solder just flowed. Looks pretty darn good. Good for us. Okay, we'll drop that in the pickle. All right, I'll pick back up with you after I polish those. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Today's actually the next day, and uh, it was beautiful all day yesterday, and it's rained all day today. But you know what they say, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait about five minutes because it'll change, and that's what happened. But still, we need the rain. The grass is green. Life is good. I finished the conchos. I sold a tractor in, in between the last time we talked and sold my old tractor to a friend of ours. She was really in need of a tractor and had uh, limited funds, as we all do. So we made a deal. Now, what am I going to do with the old tractor money? Who knows? Let's have a look at those conchos now. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the system, what's, what's included in the system. I hope you're as excited about the concho making kit as I am, and I hope you can put it to good use. Let's move back over here to the bench. Okay, here is the concho kit, one component at a time. First of all, you've seen this. This is a really classical, looking concho die as an impression die. And then I also have this die, which is, I'm calling it the California Sun. And it makes a concho that looks like this. The California Sun is completely different from any other concho you will find out there on the market and anywhere you look. So you get, in the first installment of this kit, you will get the dies to be able to create these conchos. And these are both one and a quarter inch conchos, the or excuse me, one and a half inch conchos, and the center part, the middle feature that's created by the impression die is one inch in diameter. So the flower is one inch in diameter. The sun is one inch in diameter. 
but the concha was one and a half inches in diameter. And of course, you'll also get the pancake die, the one and a half inch concho pancake die. And that is designed to work with the male female forming die that we used earlier female, male, and it makes making conchos very, very easy. In fact, even though I was off selling tractors and loading up implements yesterday, I made a few more conchos because once I get into the concho making spirit, <laughs> I can't stop. I love making conchos. Did I mention that? I'm kind of a concho freak. So anyway, that is how the system works, and I hope you will jump in. Here's the plan. I plan to make a new impression die for this system about once a month. So in a year's time, you'll have the ability to make 14 conchos. And if you own the, if you purchase the complete kit, then you will be able to buy the impression dies that I make from then on at a pretty significant discount. So, I hope you're excited. I know I am. I've been working on this for weeks and weeks and I'm glad to finally announce it. So if you'd like to uh, purchase the concho making kit, you can go to my Etsy website. There's a link right up there somewhere on the channel icons and you can find all the information there. I appreciate you staying. This was kind of a long video. I appreciate your likes and I appreciate you subscribing. I hope that you can always stay creative and I look forward to seeing your bright and shiny face on the next one. Take care.